All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome. It is I, Dave, and old friend, great guest, someone with their own fantastic uh, YouTube channel, part of the Forbidden Pack Network, as we all are now in our little group of um, friends. Uh, Stacy, how are you? Stacy for Truth. I am great, actually. How are you? I am and doing- thank you for that lovely introduction. Well, you know, I, tr you know what, I try to, you know, I see these channels, you know, Tom Woods does his channel and a lot of other people do these channels are like, and here they are, the PhD with the, you know, <laughs> the degree right. anthropology uh, from the university of whatever. And you're sitting there going, wow, that's great. All I can tell you is I graduated college with a, a crappy GPA, but yes, I am. You know, <laughs> I'm doing what I do. At least, hey, at least I graduated, right? I'm not. I graduated saying, law school with a crappy GPA. You know, like, <laughs> I was like, but, what's a two point is like a C, right? So I was like, yeah. I think I was like a two point seven. Wasn't a yeah. B, but I, I, I was a radio guy, and then I, I started hanging out at the radio station. That was the end of me. So, um, but anyway, I, I, I was like a three point oh. But I was doing like real, real felony trials. Yeah. So I was busy. I was busy. See, so and I but, was going, I was going for management, and then I ended up being, you know, radio broadcast. Although I did manage the college radio station, I did manage a few things within the radio business. But I, again, that was my, you know, how your parents are like, you know, they want me to do computer science, and they're like, oh, you got to do this, going to be, and they were right. It was the next big thing, but I couldn't right. get past COBOL. I was like reading the crap and going, oh my gosh, no, stop, stop with the quadratic equations. I don't even know how to set one up, you know? <laughs> so it was, it was like, I got a C minus in that class. I was like, wow, I got through it. And then I was like, mom, dad, um, no, I'm not doing this. So they were, I guess they understood because they didn't understand any of it either. So, um, right. so anyway, today <laughs> go down a rabbit trail. So today yeah. you, this and is I, what we do. <laughs> this is what we do. So we're going to try to keep this short by Dave and Stacy standards. Cause we've done videos at, you know, two hours, whatever. We're just like, blah, blah. So, um, we're going to talk about what the Mises caucus is today. The reason I want to explore this again, and I've gone down this road a little bit and explored it, but I, you're a member, correct? You're a card-carrying yes. member of the Mises Caucus. Yes. And you're, you're, you're a registered, now, are you a registered libertarian? Yes. Okay. So Wait, I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I, I paid my dues. Okay. But what about in your, your where do you, are you, you're in Florida now, or are you still up north? Ohio. Okay, so... Are you registered with the Libertarian Party of Ohio? I don't know how to be registered, but um, you're a voter, I, registered voter. I, I, I voted. <laughs> I voted red. Okay, no, that's fine. I'm, and I'm, I'm gonna. By the way, just for the audience, you know, I've got a weird group up here. Like, I'll say something nice about Tulsi Gabbard, but then I'll, I'll say something kind of like in between about her, and then I get like you've never liked her. <laughs> I'm like, okay, but I'm, I'm open. Here's the thing. One of the reasons I, I call this channel for at least a, a, a little time now, the radical independent is because I'm kind of open. I want to listen and I want to get better at this. I want to hear, I am more, and Charles and I talk about this on this channel and his channel. I am more to the right for sure. And more red, as you mentioned there, I'm more, I'm, I'm not blue. Okay. I'm definitely not blue. So it's either red or gold or whatever it is that you want to throw a color on black. I've been more black pilled than anything else lately. Um, but what, why I wanted to have you on is because you're a member of the Mises caucus. I want to know what's different about the Mises caucus versus LP libertarian party national go for that. Okay, so I'm going to sum it up and then we'll okay. break it down. Cliff notes, yeah, whatever. So <laughs> the Libertarian Party is very largely associated with the Cato Institute. Um, you know, like started by the Koch brothers and um, it's very mainstream. It's... Um, you know, they blend in with the mainstream 
mainstream media narrative as much as they can because I don't know why people just follow, they just follow others. They're like sheep. So um, <laughs> the regular libertarians are leaning towards Cato, you know, and like Americans for Prosperity, they're, um, you know, they're friends with Cato and I don't know anything. Well, I do know some things about like money, but nothing that we want to go into. Right. The main idea is that, you know, most of the libertarians and the libertarian party itself is is too far left in that it um, caters to popular opinion instead of opposing it. Um, yesterday, Cato put out a tweet that said um, something like, yeah, it's your choice whether you want to be vaccinated or not. But if you choose not to get vaccinated, then, you know, you shouldn't, then society shouldn't pay for your health care. And, you know, I'm like, okay, what, whatever. Like, I don't, I, I, I know that this is very, this is going to piss off some of our Tulsi friends, Tulsi crap friends, but yeah. I don't really like government health care at all. I don't think that government should subsidize anybody's health care because I don't trust the government to control my health care. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so that's, that's one thing. The okay. other thing is, you know, this whole, oh, um, a lot of it has to do with the narrative. Like, mm -hmm. it's a private company, bro. That, it all comes from Cato, uh, right? Yeah. That all comes from Cato. And then, yeah. I don't know if you noticed this, I sent it to you, the FBI's pinned tweet is searching for, you know, people who um, hurt people on on January sixth, and it's yeah. and and you know these leftist libertarians buy into that, like they really think, you know, my my ex husband even he's not a, a left libertarian, he's just a leftist, but he mm -hmm. believes that Trump killed people on January 6th. And it's just, yeah, I don't know why people would think that, that there was one person who died on January 6th, and that was Ashley Babbitt. Mm -hmm. And it was her death was filmed by John Sullivan. Yep. And he then went on CNN and talked to Anderson Cooper about it. Yep. So, th so the Mises caucus doesn't buy into that bullshit. Okay, good, good. Um, the Mises Caucus is also very anti-war. Scott yep. Horton, I listened to the debate between Scott Horton and Bill Kristol. Oh um, and it was, Scott Horton did so well. I mm. was really impressed. Yep. Um, he was so well prepared. He, you know, he spoke against regime change wars which everybody else just buys into. Oh, just, yeah, just, I have just that one, Just again, this is, I, I'm, the only reason I, I decided to hold this up because the, there, you have to be really, really smart to write a book this comprehensive about a topic and, and like this. And um, this thing, you if you dive into it, I didn't read the whole thing. I read select chapters. I kind of like did some, skimming because it because there were certain things I wanted to know about and Scott I mean I don't think there's honest honest to God I don't say this because I'm, I'm trying to brown nose or butter up you know whatever the, the oh believe is. me I'm not the, either <laughs> the dude the dude is he knows this stuff in a way, you know how like some people have a hobby, like they'll wake up every morning, they'll go bird watching and they, they know every name of every bird in their neighborhood. And you're like, they're birds, but yeah, that's the crested uh, whatever. And you're sitting there going, okay, whatever, dude. This mm -hmm. guy does that with every event that has happened for the last 
20 plus years where our government has just, you know, done things and it's documented in a way. And you just like, it's almost brain overload, but let's continue with, um, I interrupted with Scott Horton. It's a brilliant book, by the way, it's called enough is enough. Um, I enough, already. enough already, enough Sorry. already, enough already. Oops, enough is enough. I already screwed the title up, Scott. Sorry. No, it's um, okay. <laughs> but go ahead. T- tell us more about the difference between, like, what I want to, what I really want to focus on in this video is wh- if you were considering becoming a libertarian, and it's a little bit more inviting these days, because, and you, and you mentioned it, I, I sum it up this way. I say, when I watch garden variety, like the LP national type people on Twitter, they all sound like Democrats to me. Right? Yeah, and, because and I think they are. And, and Peter Can- Peter Canone has said to me, he's he said that was just a, a regular. He thought it was a really good observation. I was like, but they do. I mean, because they're a tweet goes out, and I go, is that a Democrat? No, it's a Libertarian. You know, and some of them do this this thing where they try to out Libertarian each other in a in a weird way. Like the more mm-hmm. they go down this sp- specific part and you mentioned Cato, but it's almost like well hey we're trying to be like those democrats but we believe in i don't know low taxes i mean what what is it that separates them at the end of the day so i'm looking if i'm the political independent which i am and i'm looking for a home and you're and you're stacy you're selling me a political home like a like a piece of real estate like dave this is a three bedroom, two bath. It's, you know, tile floors, new air conditioning system, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> why? I mean, Florida, why should mm-hmm. I buy into your Mises caucus house? Because Mises is right. Okay. Tell me why. Because Mises is right. <laughs> about, what are they because what are they right Mises- about? Are they right about, are they they right? Oh, okay. So, ah, all right. So So Mises Mises has the best of both worlds, right? Like Mises is right, Mm -hmm. but Mises is not Republican, right? Mm -hmm. Not duopoly, right? Because Mises is anti-war. Okay. Okay, good, good. All right, so- a lot of a lot of Trump voters, and I throw this in there because I was one of them. Full disclosure, I don't. I don't Me too. Anything, I don't. I I some of the things I found out about Trump. I don't know if you saw the video I did about Trump and Pfizer, which just blew my. It, but it made it, it it explained a lot of things. Um, we won't get into Trump and Pfizer in this video, but the point is, I want. And I say I want, and and you and I both know that this is going to be, say this catches fire a little bit, right? Say the big guy online is Dave Smith. He's the guy. He's the presumptive guy who could lead this, who could be the nominee, who could, and and by the way, what's great about Dave Smith is he's articulate. He's a smart ass, right? Because he's a comedian. So he's got kind of like this like sharp wit where he can cut and, and fillet. I saw him on Fox News the other day. I was shocked. And he was on there with um, Kennedy, who's supposedly a libertarian. I don't know that much. I know she was on MTV, okay, because I'm the music guy. But um, I wonder, you know, when it gets to the point, I'm wondering, and this is really thinking down the road here, is if this does catch fire. You understand that the full force of both political parties and the establishment will, will examine Dave, like he's got colon cancer. Okay, and I don't I mean to be graphic here, but it's going to be to the point where this guy is going to take, because again, Trump was a little bit of an outsider, right? Little bit, not much. As we learn more and more, we learn that, you know, he learned to play the game a little bit and he learns to leverage and he listens to his son in law or whoever, right? And screws it all up. Dave's, this guy would be like, he'd be like paratrooping in. Right, like poof, I'm Dave Smith, <laughs> and I'm. It's like then I hear that Mission Impossible music in the background. Dun 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 dun. Okay, Dave, what do you got? So I mean, this is gonna. It would be. I would be. Here's what I would do. I'd vote for him, as as a protest vote, 
And I would be like, I don't care if the other guy, the lesser of two evils wins or the evil, the more evil of the two evils wins like Biden. Biden is the more evil. I'll still stand by that. I don't because gas is like a buck more a gallon. Uh, we got a border that's open. We got I mean, you can go down a list of things that I don't like about this current situation that we're in. But neither of those political establishments wants to stop the car from going over the cliff. They just drive it at different speeds, you know? So here comes a libertarian, here comes a Mises caucus, and I'm Stacy, and I'm selling this. Okay, you said they're right. They're like kind of like the libertarian right to some degree. They're anti-war, they're pro-business. They're tell us about here's here's a big one because this to me is a closer. If you can close this and sell it to me, then I buy your house. When you say to me, we're anti-tyranny, we are against mandates, right? Are they, are the Mises Caucus people, are they? Mises, the Mises Caucus has been the leading voice that has been um, no vaccine passports ever since the idea first came about. And right. really, Angela McArdle, she's running for chair in yep. um, 2022. And if I feel like doing everything that it takes to become a delegate, which, yep. you know, I don't really like dealing with people all that much, <laughs> but <laughs> but if I can manage to do that and, you know, go to, to Vegas and yeah. cast my vote for her as a delegate, I would definitely do so. She is, she is so reasonable, logical, kind, she does not let her emotions control her ever. Yeah. Um, in fact, it's like, it's like sometimes when I tell her things that, you know, would kind of like evoke an emotional response from someone else, she's like, oh, okay. Well, thank you for the information. <laughs> and um, it's just, it's really, it's, it's that controlled demeanor and, mm -hmm you know, not like striking back because you feel hurt about something. And it's mm. like, she has, I've just, I've been with her from the beginning. Like ever since I, I knew who she was, Jacob Hornberger's um, Instagram account, I think said something about Angela McArdle. And I was like, wow, who is that? And then, you know, when, when she was new, when she was very, very new, I contacted her and I was like, yeah. Wow, you're amazing. Can I interview you? And she's just, um, you know, she's reasonable. She's right. the Libertarian Party has a problem because the leadership is, um, you know, like Nick Sarwark <laughs> still has his hands in what's going on. And so yeah. they're trying to kick Mises Caucus members out of each of the state um each of the state parties, each of the libertarian state parties, and their, uh, their, their corruption is being exposed, mm -hmm. but to some extent, they're, they're kind of, um, they're still, they're still pecking away at it. Like Karen Ann Harlos, yeah. you know, she's excellent. She, she, I think that she used to be a member of the Mises caucus, but when she, um, started serving as i think she's she was the secretary yeah. of the Li national libertarian party and then they somehow like kicked her out and it's because she exposed their corrupt bullshit so yeah. there's a lot of stuff going on within the libertarian party a lot of corruption um and you know nick sarwark is is obviously with those left libertarians, I don't know what happened to him. You know, somebody said that they ran into his parents and his parents were like, yeah, Nick, Nick loves Ron Paul. Well, Nick talks shit about Ron Paul. You know, yeah. he, he called Ron Paul a conspiracy theorist, which that's why I decided to um, join the Mises Caucus about a year ago or so. Yeah. You know, he, he Nick's our work called Ron Paul a conspiracy theorist because mm -hmm. Ron Paul was questioning the narrative 
the January 1st narrative. Yeah. Yeah. January 6th. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I, I know. I mean, we, we're here for each other. If I say something dumb, you can, you can correct me. Not that that was dumb. That was just, you know, I, I misspeak all the time like that. Yeah. So, no, it's okay. Um, I say dumb shit. <laughs> but it's good. It's good dumb shit. Um, yeah. And so, okay. So let's, um, so you got some good stuff about Mises Caucus. Obviously they are uh, a prosperity version of the, in the, within the libertarian construct and they believe in peace prosperity freedom of speech correct uh freedom of religion because there's a lot of and you and i've gone back and forth on this when we message each, each other there is a faction within the libertarian party that seems to kind of and, and again i understand the unity between christians and atheists but there seems to be a lot of sort of smack talk, whatever you want to call it, trash talk about Christians, right? Christians are, right. you know, they, they worship the fairy sky God and it's just silly. And, and you, you're not intellectual. You're not really that smart if you believe in Christ and you should just, you know, or any religion for that matter, right? So I think that's really, a, let, me, let me say this to, as a political strategist and not as a Christian. I think that's a real loser strategy to embrace if you're going to go out there each day and kind of deconstruct Christianity because you personally may have had a bad experience with somebody within your life that was a Christian or was trying to minister to you as a Christian. Um, not all Christianity is equal. We're seeing that now with some of these churches that are, you know, they're locking down and they're obeying and they don't seem to have any backbone and they're going along with a narrative. But there are a few out there who are right on the front lines of this saying, screw this. So, I mean, there's a pa pastor up in Canada. I don't know if you've ever heard of this guy, Artur. Um, he was, he was, he's Polish, so he kind of knows the whole drill. And he was, he was the guy famously who told a bunch of Canadian authorities to, to get out. And he said it like that very loud. And <laughs> basically get kicked him out. out. <laughs> and, and he called him a bunch of Nazis at one point. Um, yeah. I mean, he was, he's been arrested twice, like handcuffed behind his head on the highway. Once he was in the United States, he flew back to Canada. They arrested him again. They charged him for like, like baptizing somebody. He was charged, I mean, baptizing without a mask, you know, that's what the charge was. Um, and he got out, but he's got court fees, court dates. So, my, my point is for the libertarians to kind of, they should want, you know, you hear about like the GOP, the big tent and the GOP. Well, okay, libertarians, here's a deal. Stop focusing on somebody's religion and just try to deconstruct them and wasting all that energy and time and thought. Why don't you just embrace people and say, okay, they're on your team. You don't have to have the exact same belief system. They're on your team. Right. And that's, by the way, their belief system which if you're a Christian, you know, you have liberty, right? You have freedom because you're told from the very beginning, you have freedom in Christ, right? So people go up that chain and they say, well, I don't answer to Joe Biden, right? I don't answer to a king. I don't answer to a monarch. I know who my king is, right? So this, I think, dovetails perfectly with libertarianism if it's practiced the way it's written. You know what I'm saying? I often see things, Stacy, where it says, yeah, this is what liberty, you take the libertarian quiz. I take it. And I always, I always show up in the right column, but I'm always in like toward the center. I'm like, no, I don't like war. No, I don't want, I don't want people searching my possessions. You know, I mean, I, I hit all the buttons, fourth amendment, first amendment, second amendment, 10th. I know the libertarians are kind of mixed on the 10th amendment, but the point is, I am, um, I'm right in there. <laughs> so you would think they would want someone like me. And I don't want it to be controlled opposition. I want it to be something that can, because the Republicans are effing up other than like Tom Massey. And he's, you know, he's my favorite, by the way. Yeah, I can listen to Marjorie Taylor Greene smack down some people on the left. I, I enjoy uh, she's, it. She's crazy. <laughs> She fundraises a lot, you know, and she lifts. Yeah. I wish I had her, I mean, as a man, her physique, I mean, the way she, I mean, she pumps iron. I mean, that's cool. <laughs> you know, I didn't, 
I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's tough. I mean, she does all these videos where they're like, she's doing like chin ups and pull- I'm just like, well, how the hell is she doing that? Wow. Yeah. But, but there are a lot of people that in on the right who are kind of in the Trump cult and they don't really, do you know that Trump took a million dollars from Pfizer? I tell my Trump friends, because I have a lot of them. So, you know, he took I, a church. I've done it. And they're like, are you serious? I'm like, why do you think he, he's out there saying, oh, these are stupendous. This is the greatest thing. And I'm going, there's your, there's your logic. There's your reason. Jared, his name is Jared Kushner. All right. Who ran the country last time around. It was Jared Kushner. It was Ivanka Trump. John Bolton. Ugh, all right. Mike are, Pompeo. Oh, my, Mike Pompeo, as I like to call him. Yeah. He, um, and he's out there too. And he's, he's a little bit different as a Christian. He's almost like this guy who thinks yeah. there's a Christian, like a theology, like a theocracy that needs to be installed. I'm like, as a Christian, I'm like, no, I just want them to leave right. me alone so I can worship God. I don't want to take over the country, you know? And right, just- right. Yeah. Some of these, like, n- not all Christians speak for us. Because I think that the problem with a lot of Christians, you know, when when religion gets mixed with politics, that's really bad. And religion, you know, the Republican Party, um, you know, basically buying these evangelicals to spread the message that like. uh, To me, I think of it like. um, You if it says something is prophecy you know if they're if Uh, if the evangelicals are interpreting it a certain way to where you know oh eventually russia is gonna come against us and russia and iran like for like i don't i don't know i i when i read the book of revelations i'm like you know this doesn't make any sense to me yeah i'm i'm smart right like i have a law degree i I analyze things, I read things and I'm, and I figure out what they're saying, you know, that's what I do, but I don't see, you know, oh, in the end, Russia and Iran are going to try to destroy us. Uh, Well, I mean, there's, I don't want to get into a theological discussion about any of this really, but I will say this, um, I think right now, if you're a Christian, and there are some Christians that have really woken up and have stopped watching Joel Osteen for a little while, right? Because mm-hmm. um, <laughs> it's just like, hey, fans, going to be great today. You're going to have every day's a Friday. Hi, I'm Joel. You know, so there yeah. are Christians that are reading Revelation like things. And I, again, do I? Well, think you know what? Re- let me let me correct myself just, okay. just real quick. Okay. okay so. It's, it's not that I don't see any evidence of that whatsoever in the Bible. Yeah. You know, I, there are things that bother me, especially mm-hmm. in the Old Testament. Yeah. Um, and we won't get into all of that. But <laughs> here's, here's what I think the problem is. I think that when you have the prophecy and it's interpreted a certain way and then... Um, Christians believe that, oh, well, these are going to be my enemies in the future. So then government is like, okay, let's make them our enemies now. Yeah. Because if we make them our enemies now, then we can say, oh, this is just prophecy being fulfilled. And so like, if there's going to be destruction Mm -hmm. in the end, you know, is it like, should you cause that disru- that destruction I, I know, to I happen yeah. it's like a self-fulfilling Filling. prophecy correct I so i think that's problematic and in, in your 100 percent, i'm i'm with you on that 100 percent. i am there are a lot of a lot of christians and i probably i don't want to stay too too long on this but there are a lot of christians that talk about you know hey israel 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 and i'm like all right. And, and I do this to him. And there is a theology to what I'm saying, by the way, which is crazy. And I didn't know that until later on. Somebody told me, you believe in replacement theology. I go, what the hell is that? Right. So <laughs> I don't believe that as 
Israel stands right now as they behave, as they believe, because they, they're still waiting. Let's just be honest here. They're still waiting for a savior. They're, they're Jews. They're, Judaism is not Christianity. But all of these, you go, you go on Christian TV and it's like, oh, we need to support Israel. I go, really? But they don't believe in Christ. They're, they believe in, so this is called replacement theology. See, you're supposed to, what you're supposed to believe is that the Jews are God's chosen people. Right. right? right. So you do everything you can. Mike Pompeo and Mike Pence, by the way, this is their worldview, is that you support Israel. What did Israel do to their population recently, Stacy? They stuck a sharp, shiny object in everybody, and they said, you're, you're part of the experiment, and we got a lot of money from Pfizer, and you know, and so I'm thinking to myself, no, no, no. See, that's, I, and, and by the way, that doesn't necessarily just disqualify them, but the fact that I'm a Christian, I'm not a Jew, all right? And I'm, and I'm not saying anything bad about Jews. I'm not anti, let me just make this clear. I'm not anti-Semitic, but it's kind of funny how Christians have formed alliances with people that don't share their worldview based on Old Testament. You talked about Old Testament. And there are some things in the New Testament, it, again, we can, we can go down this road all day long with interpretation, and this is the problem with all of it. I think as Christians, what we need to do is what the Bible says, be wise. Be as wise as, I think, a serpent, but as peaceful as a dove, and I'm probably quoting that way out of context. But I see one of the reasons I like the Libertarian Party or the Mises Caucus is this idea of the non-aggression principle as a last resort. It's not like a first resort. And, you know, Donald Trump, he surrounded himself with people, and I get it, he wanted to kick some terrorist butt, okay? However, at the end of it all, you gotta say to yourself, okay, when does this end? There are always gonna be terrorists, and I'm not saying you don't have a strong defense, and I'm not saying you don't, like, make plans like you don't pull out of a country for instance and leave your troops and people behind be just have some kind of action plan all right i'm not saying you don't do that i'm glad we got out of there but the way we got out of there kind of sucked and i don't think that, there was any good way to get out of there really but what but here's my point though what that does is it gives the neocons ammo it says yeah. oh look what we did we need to go back we need to go back and fix what we broke. Well, yeah. didn't you kind of see that coming, though? But, but see, <laughs> if you did have, if you said, okay, let's get all of the troops out of there first. Let's get all of our civilians out of there. Let's have a plan. You mean, you mean to tell me, Stacy, with all our covert, deep state, secretive ops, and incredible alphabet soup, James Bond organizations, that we couldn't have planned that out slightly better? Oh. I here's what I want to know. Here, yeah. Here's what I want to know. Okay. So, you know, the whole um, controversy about Tulsi saying, like, we need to go after these terrorists. I, you know, I agree with Tulsi. If there's a terrorist, it's better to just go send the mil military in and take them out, right? Correct. Yes. Maybe so that yeah. That's better than trying to do a whole regime change bullshit yeah. operation. Right. However, I have a question, okay? Mm. And you watch the news and it's just like, they just, it just feeds you all this shit and all these emotions that I'm supposed to like have all these emotions as a response to like what they're telling me on the news. Here's what I want to know. Mm. Okay, so... The military droned a family, right? Yes, they did. And so they they screwed up. Mm -hmm. They were supposed to drone a terrorist instead right. of an innocent family. Correct. Okay, so that was dumb, da dum dum dum. But here's my question: Literally. Who is the alleged terrorist that they were trying to drone, mm. and how was that person how is that person a terrorist like what is the alleged act of terrorism and do do they tell us the american people no, no. 
do I trust what they say? Right. No, no. Tell me who, you know, why are we killing? Why is this person a terrorist? What's yep. the alleged act of terrorism? Can, right. I mean, can we at least know, like, why we're droning people? Because <laughs> I would, you know, tell me, like, if mm. there's a really bad person or a really bad entity that's doing really bad things, yeah. um, prove it. Sure. Right? Yeah. Prove it. Like, right. don't just go droning people randomly. Yeah. And then like, oops, wrong, wrong family. Horrible, horrible. Just <laughs> disgusting. I, and I agree. I'm a hundred percent with you. Um, the, the problem with the runaway and you don't really see that much of a difference. And this is a lot of my more Republican friends, you know, on foreign policy, I don't agree with 99% of them other than maybe a few libertarian ish Republicans. I'll say to them, look, why are we still there? Well, we have to stabilize the region. We were there for 20 years. We couldn't do it. All right. We lost that war. Just like Vietnam, we lost it. It's, it's over. It's done. Okay. And the way we left sucked. All right. But we are, we are done unless they send. See, to me, this is just a pretext. And we'll see this again. It's, it's not over. They got woke. They got woke generals. But they also have generals that they... Everybody is bought into this whole notion that America is, is this empire that needs to go around and, and try to fix things. And we can't even, we don't even fix things here. This is why the whole notion of America first as, a, as an idea is a good idea. It's a good idea if we actually did it. But, you know, it's not Saudi Arabia first. It's not Israel first. You know, Tulsi Gabbard called this out a while ago. And yeah, is she, she's got kind of a foot, you know, I've seen her picture up there, Council on Foreign Relations, a little, a little scary to see her picture as the up and coming, and you've already covered this, but the rising star. And, and yeah, we, I don't, we covered this together, World Economic Forum. Right. And then, everybody, and, everybody hated us. Klaus Schwab, right? Do you want Klaus Schwab calling the shots, the COVID-19 great reset? He wrote a book. I mean, it's out there. Everybody... See, there are a lot of good woke, not woke, uh, that's a bad word, awake, more conservative and religious people that have finally come to the, you know, and they've come to the table. And there, I was going to make this point about the Bible and Revelation, is that what, mo what most Christians are really worried about right now is not, you know, who's going to attack us. Government. Right. They're, they're woken up to the idea that, uh-oh, <laughs> mark of the beast, uh-oh, digital currency, uh-oh, it's, they're going to put something, like, they're not already putting crap in your body, possibly, as we right. speak, to track. I mean, Glenn Greenwald was on this in 2005. He wrote a book mm. called Nowhere to Hide, right? Fif about 15 years, and good for Glenn, by the way, for getting over to Rumble and getting his stuff out there, because he's dangerous. Right. You know why he's dangerous? Because he's a lefty. Because he tells the truth. Who speaks truth. So mm -hmm. they go, well, you're just another right wing. Cons no, not Glenn Greenwald. You're going to call him no. Jimmy Dore. It's like when they have Jimmy Dore and Robert Malone on talking about, you know, mRNA. Um, it's like, how now, how are you going to discredit this? Or how are you going to come at this? You know? Yeah. Um, so anyway, let's get back to Mises because I, I didn't want to make this a super long video. You and I haven't done a video in a while. So you and I should probably do like coffee chat or something before or after. So we get yeah. it out of our system. But um, okay, so you've been selling Mises Caucus as kind of a, we'll call it a right leaning version of libertarianism. Sell me on what, what makes it. All right, let me ask you this. Do you think the the Mises Caucus can overtake the 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 sort of LP national sort of lefty Cato Institute Koch brothers anything goes the key the key to doing that is getting Angela McArdle elected in 2022 and how realistic we, is that um uh, we can do it we need yeah. help we need we need people who are better than me at 
political stuff, you know, because you have to go to meetings and, you know, you have to become involved and um, aren't you marrying people? Aren't you about to marry a real brainy guy who could do this? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that real brainy guy. Um, <laughs> he. I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. I threw you, I threw you a curveball in the midst of that, but I just thought to myself, he, the, the, he dude, really... the dude is as smart as anybody I've ever talked to. He just he just is. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He is. Um yeah, I mean I think he I you know, I hope I hope that he does do that. I hope that. He's kind of he's kind of black pilled though. He he definitely is black pilled. Yeah. I could tell his Twitter feed even when he and I and that was an honor by the way for me to get on his show. I mean that was kill and he's on like with Tim Pool a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, "Hey, that that I mean, if you follow it's like it's like the apes evolution. It's like right. Dave, <laughs> Dave was Dave was part of this thing that went up to 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 Tim Pool and Canones and I'm like Hey, I now I'm I'm somebody thanks to Peter. So um, no, and and here's the deal. It's it's I don't want to be like celebrity worship here. I don't care about celebrities. I care about um like what are they saying? Like I respect Tim Pool, I respect Peter. There's some people, I mean, I disagree with Jimmy Dore, I don't agree with, but I respect him a lot of times. Um, I think we're all in this together. And I'm I'm one of the reasons I want to have you on and talk about Mises is because this could go somewhere and this could be an alternative to the the typical Republican. See, what I was saying to Peter during our talk was I'm almost wanting Republicans on steroids. You know what I mean? I hate to say it like that because it's not accurate, but I want people to follow the Constitution. I want people to follow the Bill of Rights. I want, don't search me, bro. You know, don't, I mean, leave my health decisions up to me. And I was telling him, if you guys would lock on to that, right, and you guys or them or whoever, right, lock on to the tyranny, the medical apartheid that's happening. Look what's going on in Australia right now. That's just, you can make parallels to Germany 1939. You can easily draw that parallel and, I, and people go, you're crazy, dude. You don't understand. They led people to gas chambers. I said, yeah, not 1939. They didn't. They were warming up the gas gas chambers in 1939. So I think America is on the same path, but maybe a few steps down the path. And I'm really afraid for my kids. I'm afraid for just doing the things that you and I grew up doing and not thinking about it because we could always do it. They're talking, Stacy. they're talking about interstate travel bans. I don't know if you heard this. Biden was talking about, hey, you know, if you want to go to Georgia, good luck. Because I'm going to close, because that's the interstate highway, the brilliance of Eisenhower. Like, hey, we're going to have a highway system. And now some tyrant's going to use it to stop you from traveling. I don't know, maybe I can take a back road over the border, but I can't use the interstate <laughs> highway system, right? It's right. like, we're going to do workarounds, homeschooling. You have to do workaround. Um, jobs where they're, they're terminating people because they won't do the thing, right? They won't do that thing. And so like my wife, honest to God, could happen probably by November. And she's, I mean, we're both get worried because she's the brains and the income. And I'm just like the support system. You're the brains too. Well, here's, here's the thing though. You, you know, you, you, you complain your life so much, but then the government actually can affect your life. They can, mm -hmm. they can say, you know, you were earning money, but until you obey us, you can't keep earning. It's Google does this, by the way. We know that, right? You play their game. They're going to turn, oh, we're going to throttle this down. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I gained two, sub on this channel, I gained like three subscribers. I lose five. I gained 10. I lose eight. Some, it's just, I've been at the same level on this channel, subscriber-wise, for like a year. And then nobody watches the videos compared to when I was all Tulsi all the time. So right. I don't know. But let me um, let me ask you something new or different about the Mises Caucus. Why do you, th do you think they have a shot politically if they can take this party over? 
or is this just a pipe dream? Is this a way to kind of just vent, you know, like in 1992, the people who voted for Ross Perot, they were like, yes, I didn't have to vote for two, either one of those clowns. Is this just a really good way to, to kind if of- we, if, we, if we don't get Angela McArdle elected mm -hmm. as chair, I don't, think, I don't think that we can even get Dave nominated yeah. as um, the libertarian presidential nominee. Yeah. So, and I do, I, I do prefer Dave Smith over yeah. any of the other presidential candidates, but like, to me, it's not, it's not as much about like the presidential nominee as it is about um, having control over the message because mm -hmm. The, to me, the prob the biggest problem is that the Libertarian Party mm -hmm. um, and people in charge of the Libertarian Party are, they're just, they're spewing out stuff that's just incorrect. that mm -hmm. just goes along with the mainstream media narrative. You know, the Cato Institute just kind of like goes along with the narrative. And sometimes the narrative is false mm -hmm. you know like if you do your own fact checking <laughs> what a concept <laughs> okay right um you'll you know you you'll see that guess what they're lying to us about mm -hmm. some things and you know look into it for yourself and yeah. you know dave smith doesn't fall in line with you know, that, that crap that like, let's like do, let's parrot whatever's popular and, you know, move along. That's yeah. not what we do at Mises. So. Yeah. Well, I think there's a huge opportunity and I've said so on Twitter a couple of times. Um, I've kind of backed away from it a little bit. I hate to be like the late to the party guy, but I want to see what happens with this. Um, I get discouraged when, when you tweet something or say something that I think is kind of like a, a self-evident truth, like I should have the right to do what I want to with my body, right? I, I, I just think that's a self-evident truth. I don't think that's difficult. And then people come along and say, well, you're the reason why we're not reaching our goal that everyone get you know, vaccinated and herd immunity and all this stuff. And I'm like, I'm the reason? Really? Yeah, the, uh, like I said, the Mises Caucus was the leading voice against vaccine passports from the beginning. Yeah. You know, ever since they were just an idea, like, you know, yeah. and everyone was like, oh, that's a conspiracy theory. That'll never happen. <laughs> and we, and, you know, the Mises Caucus was like, okay, you know, yeah, see, if you're just not wait and it's bullshit and we need to fight against it. Well, see, when I first discovered the Libertarian Party, I saw the, the word liberty buried in there somewhere, like libertarian liberty. So I thought <laughs> to myself, well, liberty, that's a cool concept because liberty is freedom. It's I can do what I want. It's, you know, and and no offense to the, the people who are, hey, dude, you know, as long as I can smoke what I want, you legalize it. And it's the most important thing. I, I'm always amazed at those people because I'm like, yeah, you can do all that, but you can't go outside now. How do you feel now? I mean, it's it's to me, again, it's it's prioritizing. It's what I told Peter. I said, you know, right now, that's the jackpot. That's why when I, I listen to Tom Woods, I hear truth. I hear, okay, he's talking about this Absolutely. again. And he even apologizes sometimes. I'm sorry, I got to talk about this again. But if we're not going to talk about liberty, if we're going to talk about, and, and he'll put out statistics, which I love because nobody's countering, you know? Yes. You should people. come to Tom's uh, 2000th episode. Isn't it sold in, out? In Orlando. I don't know. Yeah, I thought it was. I can, is it sold out? I have to check because I think he sent me a notification that it's sold out. I'm um, going. I, I'll check too. Yeah, check with the hay. You know, maybe right. I'll, you know, like I told you privately, so I don't. I don't do anything. I don't go anywhere. Um, no, and I. I don't think it's sold out because I. 
I was talking to a girl on Twitter yesterday. I have a new friend. Her name is Raquel Russell. She's so smart. She, David, you should talk to her. She, um, send me your stuff. She researches, uh, constitutional case law that has to do with like privacy, like don't see, and that's, and that's what we need. See, see, that's what I told you about the being a Republican on steroids. Because the Republicans, they'll say, oh, I'm for the Constitution, I'm for freedom, and, da, 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 da. and then they fundraise, and they fundraise, and then, well, we couldn't vote for it this time around, but maybe next time. It's like, seriously? Seriously? Right. You know, and then you got, like, I researched the Constitution Party, and they've got, like, 10 people in their part. I'm being facetious, but it's, <laughs> it's a small group of very dedicated, nice people, but they're yeah. not going anywhere politically libertarians are on the ballot i believe in all 50 states they mm -hmm. could make an impact and i said this last time around joe jorgensen was a very big disappointment as a candidate um she got out of the gate talking about like blm and all this stuff and i was like no no she's she's such a nice person i met her in person she's really yeah. a really nice person smart, i think too very smart. I, you know, I think it wasn't just the problem with the messaging. You know, Joe Jorgensen never handled her own Twitter account. Oh, you know, um, yeah. So there were, I think, I don't know. I don't want to. It's like Mike, things. remember Mike Gravel didn't handle his own. They had these two college kids running the Gravel site because he's he right. was like 88 years old or something when, when that whole thing went down. But um, I look, it's too bad because we needed, and, and then the I'm with her thing, which, which is just like the Hillary. That Clinton. was, yeah. That was like, stop. The, that it. was like the morning after she got the nomination. And I was, I woke up and I was like, all right, like, let me get ready to like buy a Jor Jorgensen hat or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was, I had, and then I, I, I go on Twitter and I'm like, what? I I'm know. with her. And then I just, Ugh. I mean, so yeah, that it's, it, not people don't see start. that from that perspective, okay, this didn't work. By the way, it didn't work for I'm with her, did it? You know, she was supposed to win. She didn't win. And, uh, you know, and so it's like, here's the thing. And I'll probably should wrap this up because I wanted to keep it to a certain length here. Um, they're going to be, the, Donald Trump still has, and I'm just going to say this because it's honest. It's, and I don't, I don't agree with all the policies, obviously, of Donald Trump. He has a lot of political capital. And what's happening is you're seeing a boomerang. I mean, Biden's in the tank when it comes to all the polls. He's, he's, he's taking a beating with independents. He's taking a beating with his own party. Uh, and Republicans obviously hate him. So, I mean, again, here's the opening again for Trump. I, I'm tired of Trump. I, 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 I'm t I want... And, and there's some things about them that are okay. But then at the end of the day, we have systemic problems that Trump, what Trump will do is maybe he'll manage some of the chaos a little bit differently than Biden, because Biden's not doing anything. I think this is Susan Rice and Barack Obama running. Biden just goes along with like the yeah. World Economic Forum. Yeah, which, you know, again, and Trump hates that. Trump had some good, like we always say with Trump, and I even heard Tom Wood say this, is he had a lot of good tendencies, but then people would, it's like they would, it was like self-defeating. Like he would do something kind of good and then the rug would get pulled out and you'd be like, okay, well, he doesn't really care. And I'm so and he tired. he kind of seemed bipolar too. Like, Well, and here's the big thing. I, I think they, they wrote it out of his last speech because what I've been doing is trying to pay attention when he does these rallies, see if he's going to talk about Pfizer and how great all this is. And he, he did that up until he got booed. I don't know if you heard one of the speeches he gave and, and then everybody booed him. And I was like, yes, yes, finally, they're waking up to this. Boo the hell out of him, you know, when he yeah. says that. But hey, do I want, do I want to take a chance on, he took a million dollars for his inauguration. I mean, RF, RFK Jr. outed him on that. Very few people in the media are talking about it on either side because number one, they don't want to give RFK Jr. any credit for being that guy in that situation. Because then again, oh, it's Robert F. Kennedy. I mean, people don't even know he's got a son. This is how, and he's an old right. dude. He's not like a young guy. And he's out there kind of coming from the left saying this is a bad idea. And he was supposed to be on a task force 
because even before any of this stuff, they wanted to investigate the autism and the ADHD and right. all the stuff from the old problems, you know, and, and Trump, like I used to, I told people he was thoroughly anti-vax. He had people in his organization. I don't know if it was in his family, but he, he knew people that had had all kinds of issues and he wanted to study this out before all this happened. And then before inauguration day, cha-ching, a million dollars for your inauguration from Pfizer. Pfizer! All right? And this according to RFK Jr. It's not me talking about this. Right. So anyway, long story and, short. And here. really, when Trump got COVID, he was cured by Regeneron. Ah, well, there you go. <laughs> there, and there's another pushing more. But here's here's the deal, though. I don't want to make this because, you know, YouTube and their censorship here. Um, I want there to be an alternative, like legitimate, like I can, like this would take some of the political wind because if he's over there saying, oh, it's stupendous, it's great. I'll tell you what, part of his base right now is like, shut up, just shut up. You know, you're the one, people are going to realize it's kind of like a woman who gets impregnated and then has a rough delivery with a baby. She looks at the person that did it to her and says, you did this to me. (laughs) right? You're the one who did this to me, <laughs> right? And so there yeah. are some people, <laughs> I made you laugh. It's good. Um, <laughs> it's an old joke. It's an old joke. Um, but there are some people that are going, well, who's Mr. Operation Warp Speed, right? So right. anyway, I know who that is. And I hate that. I'm like, what did you, why, you know? So, yeah. and you didn't fire any of these clowns. Oh, I might fire Fauci. You didn't. You might, you know, you had your arm twisted to fire John Bolton. None of these, you had your vice president was a, was a loser. Okay. All of these people, neocon losers. All right. So (laughs) so, just being honest. I like it when you get so mad like that. (laughs) But but this is what, but what we need, Stacey, is if things happen the way you're hoping they happen with um, the Mises caucus, Dave Smith. I wish he'd drop comic Dave Smith and just be Dave Smith, like smart guy. I really do. The only reason I, I, and he's smart and he's funny and I get it. He's initially, and, and comedians, George Carlin was really sharp as anything I've ever heard. You know, some of his observations didn't agree with everything he said, but again, equal opportunity offender going after the political establishment. Here's an alternative. Here's an uprising. Of course, we have to worry about if you vote for Dave Smith, does your does your vote count? You know what I mean. We still have some of these other issues that to, you know, which I I'm very worried about. I heard up in Pennsylvania they took all the Joe Jorgensen votes and gave them to the guys whose initials are JB. So I I mean I don't know yeah. if or not, but we've we've got systemic problems, and I guess I can vote with a clear conscience and say you know what this is who I voted for. This guy was really good. Imagine him on a debate stage. I mean, he would be really entertaining, you know? Mm -hmm. So so any any last thoughts on the Mises caucus? Sell me one more time. Sell the audience on why we should all be Mises to pieces. Why should we we do it? uh, Because, okay. Because Mises caucus, is the leading voice and will continue to be the leading voice on like no vaccine passports. Mm -hmm. No, you can't stick anything. Um, You can't jab me without permission. Mm -hmm. You know, no, we're not gonna follow follow along with the mainstream media narrative. We're Mm -hmm. gonna, you know, we're gonna, research it and figure out what's actually true right so and you know because join the Mises caucus because the narrative is really important and we are in the middle of a culture war and we need to be able to get control of the libertarian party narrative Mm -hmm. so that we can stop all this crazy leftist um bullshit the narrative 
the narrative that's bullshit. Like if you're tired of the leftist bullshit narrative, um, because you know it's bullshit, and you also know that the Republican war hawks are full of bullshit, mm -hmm. um, and you don't want to be vaxxed, like jabbed for the rest of your life, yeah. And really come stand with the Mises caucus and, you know, no, we can't do it unless we get Angela McArdle elected. Like right. I like Dave Smith too. I think Dave Smith is great. You want Dave Smith. You, we got to have Angela McArdle first. To me, it's just, um, it's just logical. If the Mises caucus can't get control of the party, then how is Dave Smith going to get the libertarian presidential nomination yeah so let's let's like let's deal with first things first join the mises caucus support angela mcardle um do what it takes to become a delegate you know if you like talking to people and dealing with people you know join your local mises caucus and yeah. get involved and um you know pete and i have met some great people already um kennedy edwards kennedy eric and kennedy edwards um you know they're a member of our local mises caucus so we're gonna we're gonna get involved um you know do that become a delegate and let's get angela mcardle elected in vegas in 2022 all right well let's hope that what happens in vegas doesn't stay in vegas this time let's hope it spreads <laughs> throughout the country my special guest today, Stacy for Truth. Stacy, uh, what's your channel on? Um, is it just Stacy for Truth on YouTube, right? Stacy for Truth. Yeah, right. and um, subscribe to Odyssey. Good stuff is going to be on Odyssey. Me, so um, and I have. I'm going to be posting my interview with Charles soon too. So like. Yeah, we'll and there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of stuff we can't um, say here that you can say and upload to odyssey so that's probably why you know obviously you've got you're doing that um i know charles is on rockfin i'm on rockfin rockfin's a pretty good platform i just actually it's funny that you mentioned odyssey because i just made the radical independent over on odyssey i've uploaded one video over there and it's again it's good to have backups here and you're on twitter stacy for truth right on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Excellent. Also member of the forbidden pack network here on YouTube with yours truly and Charles Anderson. Um, we all come at this slightly different. I would say Stacy is probably the most libertarian of the bunch. And I like her a lot. I like what she has to say. Um, I like libertarianism. If it's done the way mm -hmm. the name says it should be done. That's my point yeah, yeah. earlier where the word Liberty is in there. So in any event, thanks again for tuning in and uh, we'll see you soon.